Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another survey edition of the Garage Gym Experiment podcast. I'm Adam, and I'm here with, of course, Jake. And we're joined by two guests, Matt Pendergraft and Kyle of Kaizen DIY Gym. These guys are friends of the show. We're excited to have them back on. Matt, how you doing, buddy? Doing well, Adam. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. Nice. Kyle, what's going on, man? I'm happy to be back, having a good day today, just uh, ready to get into these survey results. Yeah, we appreciate you guys coming on with us tonight. In tonight's episode, we've broken it into a few different sections. We'll start off by going over the survey results from the Sunday survey. This was highlighted by some overrated, underrated results and some specific examples, including specialty bars, west side spacing, six post power racks, and more. We'll also dive into the Sunday survey discussions, which asked about favorite hacks and DIY projects. Matt and Kyle will add some thoughts to this one. Finally, we're going to go through trying something new tonight. Uh, we're going to chat about the first three weeks of the 2022 hot or not result. And with that, let's send it over to Jake. Jake, how about those survey results? Thank you, Adam. But actually, we have an announcement to make. The second build-off is happening between Kaizen DIY and Mr. Pendergraph. Guys, can you yeah. uh, can you guys tell us what you're building and when? Uh, no, we cannot. All right, let's move Actually, to the survey. <laughs> forget that. <laughs> I'm spilling all the beans tonight. Here's the deal. Uh, so we're doing a round two. This time we're paying homage to... Uh, a really awesome company and a really awesome product. It is the Preacher Pad. There it is. We are we are pretty stoked about it. Matt, nice. what do you think? It's going to be a good one. I'm confident. I will take Kyle down this time, and uh, I will make him cry, unlike right. me crying last time. Did you uh, say the day? Are, what did we say? The 22nd? I believe so. Yeah, about three weeks. Okay. Is it exactly three yeah. weeks from, it's, from today? Yeah, three weeks from today. Whatever that yeah. Tuesday is. Yeah, I think it's the 22nd. Right. Yeah. Wait, also, let's redo that. Let's let's redo that with confidence. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> yes, we decided a date, and the date we're going to do it is February twenty second, which is three weeks from today. That's right. That's exactly right. Do, awesome. Do not, do not edit that. Keep that all in. <laughs> serious, no, no, that no. was awesome. <laughs> we we did talk about. Um, Obviously, in this build, it's a little bit different from the first one that we did because we're announcing it on the front end. This is the preacher pad. We're not going to be, if anyone wants to send us, you know, preacher pads that they have built or whatever, we're not going to be showcasing them or anything like that until after the build is done, just to keep the hype up, basically. So right. that was something yeah, we did we talk about. We don't need any suggestions. Like we right, want to come right. up with the ideas on our own and separate from each other. So you know, the, the reveal is going to be the big surprise, yeah. not just to the world, but also to Matt and I. So right. we don't just know what each other are doing. Yeah. Yep. Until the reveal. Do you guys have a pretty good idea of how you're going to do it already? I have a killer design in my mind. I think my design is so good. It's going to become version two of the preacher pad. <laughs> Dylan, wow. you hear that? <laughs> oh, nah, yeah, you better uh... watch it out. <laughs> I say I got a couple of ideas, but, uh, it's kind of one of those you don't really know how it's going to go until you start doing it. And it's, ah, it's got to right. scratch that. that. That ain't going to work like I wanted. So I had an right. idea. I'm not going to implement it into it, but I did have an idea about um, like a cup holder or something into the side of it. I thought maybe that'd be practical. But then again, why would you want a cup holder in your preacher bed? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so you, know, you, you, you got you to throw those ideas out there and see what sticks, right. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Throw. Yeah, yeah exactly. Throw a little stuff doggy in the door in there. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You never Put know. Your child in it, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> right. All right. Clearly you guys have no idea what you're talking about. So uh, <laughs> let's just move on to the survey results. As a reminder to anybody that has only listened to the podcast and a few people have reached out. That's why I'm about to mention. These surveys are traditionally accomplished via the Garage Gym Experiment Instagram account on Sunday evenings through the story. We also do posts throughout the week to get a little bit more info and if something pops up, well, we're not afraid to do it. But all the data here comes from the Instagram account Garage Gym Experiment. So to start off, we asked about eight different items or topics to see if People thought they were overrated or underrated. So I have the list here. I'm going to, I'm going to quickly read the list and then ask you three, what you think was the most overrated and what do you think people thought was the most underrated? So we have home gym hacks, six post power racks, 
home gym DIY projects, West Side spacing, adjustable dumbbells, stainless steel barbells, specialty barbells, and then owning multiple barbells. All right. Most overrated. What do you think people said? I got, I got two barbells. Really? Wow. I, do. I mean, I like it. Barbells. I'm a fan. I have a lot of them, but I think it's overrated. Wow. Interesting. Uh, I've got a tie between six post power racks and West side spacing. Yeah. I was going to say West side spacing, um, but also stainless steel bars. I don't know. Maybe because I don't have one. I don't know what all, what all the hype is about. All right. Well, uh, Adam wins this one because Dang. six post power racks were identified as the most overrated. West side spacing was number two. So boom, okay. boom. Nice. All right. Nice work. And then most underrated. I'll give you a little bit of info. 71% said it was underrated. I'm going to say hacks. Hacks were the most underrated. I don't know. Maybe, maybe adjustable dumbbells. I, I mean, I don't personally like them, but then again, I mean, they do solve a problem of not buying a whole set of dumbbells and it's usually cheaper. So yeah, I'm going to go with uh, home gym hacks. Boom. Adam, Kyle, nice work. Yeah, home yeah. gym hacks. We keep in Home gym hacks wins. Yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then uh, it was closely followed by DIY projects. So yeah. nice. So let me just go from from overrated down to underrated. So six post power racks most overrated. West side spacing forty eight percent overrated. Adjustable dumbbells forty five. Stainless steel barbells, 42. Specialty barbells, 35%. Owning multiple barbells, 33% voted overrated. 30% home gym DIY projects. And then 29% for home gym hacks. And then we did this survey last year again too. So we have some comparison data. The uh, home gym hacks and DIY projects were thrown in because you guys, but we have the other six and three of them did change quite a bit. So we'll, we'll talk about those. So six post power racks went from about 54% overrated all the way up to 63. That's a 17% difference. Mm. West side spacing also changed uh, about 18%. So last year it was 41 versus 48% this year. So this is something I can definitely see West side spacing, probably not necessary for your typical home gym owner. It's kind of a sexy term for people to throw on or as like a benefit to a rack, but not necessarily something I would say is num at the top of the list. And then six post power racks, like they're beautiful, but I mean, uh, Let's just leave it at that. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they can take up a, a good amount of space and uh, you likely don't utilize all of the features all of the time. The overall difference between the experience with a half rack isn't too different. At least I don't think. And then the topic or item, I guess you could say that jumped the most was specialty barbells. So in 2021, 47% thought they were overrated versus only 35% this time saying that they're overrated. So it's also something that makes sense. Specialty bars are kind of something you don't really, you're not really interested when you maybe are first starting your home gym. And then over time, right. you're like, oh, those look really nice. That might add some versatility or you might That's just right. learn, learn about them. Those make sense to me. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you, is there any overrated or underrated items that, that uh, are speaking to you here? I would love a six post rack. I do not think that's yeah, overrated at all. It would be so sweet just because each post serves a purpose. They it's another hold opportunity. Weights. I would put attachments on it. Like right now yeah. I have a four post rack and I have my lateral raise machine hooked up to one of the posts and it's like always in the way when I want to do other stuff. So if I had two more posts, there are two, there's two more options to put stuff on. So I don't think it's overrated at all. It's well put, well put, go. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. No, I, he's exactly right. That's exactly how I utilize mine. It's just more, I don't know, playground for me, essentially, you know, more storage, more opportunity for, for anything. So, yeah. I'd also say what speaks to me is the popularity of DIY 
and hacks. I would venture to guess that if you did put those two questions in the survey a year ago, I bet you anything they've gained in popularity. And I, I don't want to say it's because of me or it's because of Matt, but I think just general awareness around hacks, it's kind of like bars. Like you, you start off with a rack and a bar and some weights, and then you start looking around thinking what else you can do and seeing ideas on the internet, seeing other people utilize hacks to get more out of their equipment. It's going to, you know, that those ideas kind of spread and gain popularity. I bet if you do this yep. survey again in a year, they'll be even more popular. You know, it's pretty unbelievable. The amount of people that are posting their home gym hacks yeah, and DIY projects. I mean, I yeah. see some every single day. It's and creative. they, they, they have the effect of like, so somebody posts a hack and then somebody sees that and says, you know, I have a way that I can do that in mind, but I would make this change and improve it. These hacks are, are evolving. The, the, the more people that get into it that are sharing the ideas, the quicker these ideas evolve. It's really crazy to see how it'll go from point A to point Z, like in a matter <laughs> of weeks, rather than like if a company was developing this product, it would oh, take yeah. years to go through that evolution. Yep. Different skill sets too. Cause you'll post things that's like made of wood. It's really cool. But then you've got someone over here. Oh, I've got everything to fabricate it out of metal and then boom. Right. It's like, yeah. holy crap. You know, and so yeah. it takes it a whole nother level. It happens all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it, man. Such an expensive hobby to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. there's 10 things in my head that I want that I can't afford. And so if I have something little I need to accomplish, like, well, can I make that do with, um, you know, some scrap wood or something I have laying around? All right, let's do that. Yeah. Like the last thing, one of your questions, Jake was like, um, it was like uh, DIY projects. How do you feel? And one of them was like DIY storage. And I, I, it was like, yes, no. And I was like, where's the like, absolutely yes button. Because like <laughs> right. the last thing I want to spend money on is storing my equipment. I want to buy more equipment. That's how yeah. I feel. hundred percent. Yeah. I'm with you, man. Yeah. Well, we can uh, geek out about that in a bit. Sorry to <laughs> <laughs> squash Get back on track, guys. Come on. <laughs> Sorry to squash you, but we're talking Golly. specifics later. I think one thing for me that I thought should be rated a little bit higher was opposite of Kyle, stainless steel barbells. I think maybe, maybe because you're in a basement, I'm in a garage, but the stainless steel barbells hold up so much better. And if I had to do it again and I could only have one, I would absolutely try and get a stainless steel bar. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, like you said, I'm in a basement. I have no idea. And also like I'm fairly new to all this. So yeah, I, I don't see the appeal, but I can understand how if you're in a place with humidity or something, it might be an issue. That's literally the only appeal for me because the price, I don't get excited about paying more for the same product. It's just instead yeah. of steel. That's too, if I was going to do that, I'd, I'd rather just get a bare steel. But the fact that everything else rusts in a garage, at least in my climate, I mean, it, it is what it is. It's out of necessity. I'm glad they make it. Maybe it'll last longer. So yeah, I'd argue that a stainless steel barbell is still a better value than any of the coated ones. So to each their own, I guess. All right, let's move on to uh, some other kind of random questions. So how do you usually listen to audio during your home workouts? As you'd expect, uh, most are listening through a speaker. 64% said speaker, 25% said headphones, 7% TV, and then about 4% said other. Hmm. I don't like know. Like a record I, player or something? <laughs> maybe like an Amazon Echo. I guess well, that's a speaker. I do have a boombox. Uh, a seventies, um, record player in my basement. It, <laughs> Do you? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It, it'll, it'll get played for some workouts, but mostly just hanging out. Yeah. Nice. That's cool, man. Yeah. I, I just listen to headphones. I would like, I have a, like an echo speaker in my basement and I like to blast the music when I can, but my family's like always home and I just listen to metal when I work out. So the other <laughs> yeah. day I was, I was blasting metal and my wife was home and she was like, after I was done, she was like, how can you listen to that music? It's like <laughs> music people listen to when they're murdering other people. And I was like, it's just like motivation, man. It makes me feel good. It's murdering them ways. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. How do you think I got so ripped, babe? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you typically read expert reviews before most gym equipment purchases? What do you guys think? What percentage do you think say 
Yes. I think it's very high. Otherwise, why do people like Coop exist and why do they have such big followings? You know, I don't know if he classifies as the expert review that you're referring to, but well, people want opinions. There's a lot of people that do reviews. What do you think? Give a percentage. 80%. Yeah, they're they're on this channel doing a um a survey. So they're they're definitely reading stuff, I'd assume. So 80% is probably yeah. accurate. I'll do 75% just you would. Oh, that's the uh, push it down a little bit, but I'm probably the price is right. Approach. Yeah, there we go. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. Yeah, going I'll over. You should have bet one dollar. Yeah. You, you guys are all. You guys are all over. It's sixty three percent. No way. Yeah, wow. and that's that's yeah. down from seventy percent from the prior year. So I don't know. Maybe people just are more educated and they don't feel like they need as many expert reviews. And then another interesting one is what would you rather see before purchasing? So would you rather see two expert reviews or five consumer reviews? So 66% voted for five consumer reviews versus 34% two wow. expert reviews. No way. This one, this one was hard for me because um, consumer reviews, expert reviews, like we're, we're just guys like in basements and garages using stuff, but we we've had our hands on a lot of pieces of equipment. Like, are we experts or are we just consumers? You know what I mean? So like, is an expert, yeah. someone who just touches a lot of equipment too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, um, I had a tough time answering this one. I'd be an expert. In many also, things. my question was, yeah. Are those experts getting affiliate money for recommendations on those products? Cause if so, then that review isn't necessarily genuine, but I don't necessarily trust five random people on Amazon either. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to choose. I think a lot of people have the tendency to, especially if they spend a lot of money, they want to like that product at all costs. And they hate to admit that it was a bad purchase. I find that a lot. Like where you ask someone, Hey, what do you think about this? Oh, I love it. I love it. And then I get it in. It's like, why do you like this? This is crap. I'm mean, granted. I spent 500 bucks on it and I want to love it. But realistically, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like I kind of run into that a lot. So when you get five people that are saying something's great, I don't know, man. It's like, do you, do you really think it's great? Or do you want to think it's great? Cause you bought it. Yeah. So if someone, someone's given a product, I don't know. There's, there's kind of that whole, well, I mean, do you have to say it's great? Do you know, there's no skin in the game for you. So if you can be honest, yeah. that, that might be the better way to. Well, let, let me ask you this as a consumer, if you get like a toaster, and it's just average. Do you actually go ahead and review it and give it like four stars? I never do. No. <laughs> so like, I'm actually working on a toaster of... review right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a four slice. <laughs> <laughs> Only three of the slots work. <laughs> nah, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I guess if it's worth, if it's worth reviewing. I mean, some people are really passionate about appliances though. Toasters is, you know. <laughs> Ooh, I'm serious, man. People get passionate about the weirdest thing. So I guess it kind of depends on, on the person. I, therefore, at a period in my life, a, a short period, I was obsessed with toothbrushes. You know, I wanted to find the best toothbrush and I probably bought, you know, 10 to 12 toothbrushes. And did that make me an expert? Cause I put my hands on a bunch of toothbrushes. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Right. So, so I mean, you guys are basically saying the question makes no sense. So uh, it's just, it's hard. That's, that's a know, tough I'm just question messing. to answer. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm did not the, the, were the survey results in favor of the five random people on Amazon though? Is that? Well, is five that consumer reviews. It didn't okay. say five, <laughs> five complete strangers. <laughs> five people who don't know what they're talking about. Okay. Gotcha. It might just be a numbers thing. I mean, five sounds better than two. Yeah. So trust yeah. five over two people. Well, yeah. I think, I think the, the key thing here is that both of them went down from the prior year. So Okay. You know, we, we've said this a lot with the surveys, but keep our eye on it and see what it looks like in six months or so. Yeah. The next question is a follow up from a few weeks ago. Have you heard of the garage gym competition? So a few weeks ago, before we had the podcast and had Joe Gray on, it was 28%. We just wanted to see how that changed. So it went up to 36%. So cool. Yeah. Good little I mean, boost. Good little boost. I think that's about what I would have expected. I had heard of it before, but I had never participated. And after listening to that episode, I was like, man, this, this, I'm not going to be a spectator anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to do it this year. Yeah. So I'm in. All right. 
are you running some sort of business out of your home gym? And 8% are. So that's quite a bit actually. Yeah. So either most likely a trainer or, you know, one of you guys. Did that go up since you asked before or did you it, ask before? It was about the same. Okay. So, yep. And then the last survey question we have here is simply, do you have some sort of pulley system in your home gym? The, an- the possible answers were either yes, no, but interested, no, and not interested. So what percent do you think said no and not interested? Like 25%. Uh, uh, Low, (laughs) low. I I think a pulley system's like that next move after you get like that, uh, those core products. I I think no and not interested is like 10%. Adam, you're getting pretty good at this. It was 8%, (laughs) 8%. Uh, 50- he's get a, he's, he gets a lot more practice than us. Yeah, he, true. that's true. what I'm saying. He's getting pretty good at it. So R- remind the people that I don't know the answers before. Tell them. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It seemed a little fishy. <laughs> right. I'm, yeah. I'm hitting it tonight. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Going to the casino. You're in our, you're in that WordPress doc I'm looking at. <laughs> um, and then 57% said yes. This is up by a decent amount from last May, where 47% said they had a pulley system in their home gym. And then 35% said no, but interested. So there's still a good amount that, that want a pulley system. Okay. Yeah. I don't see why not. They're like so much more you can do with a pulley. Yeah. Next, next week we'll have to ask what kind of pulley system do you have? Yeah. Do you have a functional trainer or is it just like the basic pulley, you know? Right. So. rack mounted something like that yeah, yeah it'll be hard to get all of the options but you know yeah i just i just think like when you have like your bars and um your big items it's so easy to do compound movements and then by the time you like want to work on accessories if, if you're into that style of training you get a it gets a little mundane and so mm-hmm. like the pulley system is like the next buy i feel yeah. that way you don't yeah. want to i mean bands like that that'll do the trick but the pulley system makes you feel like more commercial gym lifting that you may have been used to. Yeah. yeah you can track how much you're lifting. Whereas bands, it's just like, Hmm, I think that was like 18 pounds. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> I did purple for 17 <laughs> sets, four feet away. <laughs> Next week I'm doing four and a half feet with a green <laughs> <laughs> progressive overload. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. All right. Um, all right. Let's move on to our favorite home gym. Actually, I, I miss, um, interpreted how much battery I had on this computer. Let me oh, run and no. grab my charger Uh-oh. real quick. <laughs> Hey, dad's out of the room. Let's party. We talk about whatever we want. Golly, I'm going to set my shirt off. <laughs> all right. And we are back from our short break. <laughs> Uh, so let's, let's talk about, um, our favorite home gym hacks next. We asked in our Sunday survey discussion, what were your favorite home gym hacks that you've done? So a few that caught my eye as I was scrolling through, I will say, I think the best answer comes from Crandall fitness, where he said, once you get enough equipment, your wife never notices new stuff. Mm. Mm. That's so I true. Thought, thought that was good. And it is true. <laughs> like if she doesn't see it come through the mail, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, she won't notice it's right. It's in there now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wonder if she'll, I wonder if she'll ask me about that. I don't think she's listening to these podcasts as much. She, as she, she listened to the last one. She gave me a, she gave me a good job. <laughs> Got a good oh, job. Thanks. Yeah. But yeah, she might, she might've just saw like the first few minutes. I don't, oh yeah. Where were we? So that was a good one. <laughs> um, turning your functional trainer into a belt squat was mentioned by a few different people. Belt squat is just kind of a hot item. And it was also yeah. mentioned on the DIY projects as well. Cheap ways to perform landmine movements, you know, with like a tennis ball. Um, there were, somebody also mentioned like you can do it against a tree. <laughs> It's kind of strange. <laughs> um, yeah, I like to see that one. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, propane heaters is a hack. Not necessarily th- something you'd think of to warm up your garage. Might not be the safest thing to do. But yeah, I, I, I was thinking that. Um, and then Amazon pulleys 
with you know some other tools attached to mock a pulley system. So we also brought on our home gym hack expert. I don't know if that's what you want to be called or not, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. You. Matt, can you tell us some of your the favorite home gym hacks that you've done that come to mind? Uh, that come to mind without, okay, so I was going to take this the obvious direction, which is talking about lever arms. I mean, y'all have seen, I've done a ton of stuff with the lever arms. Not everyone has lever arms. So I tried to take a more practical cost efficient hack that I used to do back in the day before I was on here. Uh, the TRX suspension trainer. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I used to uh, rig those up to my rack with chains and have those come down, make candles out of pipes or whatever. And you can use that for a ton of stuff. That's probably thinking back one of the coolest hacks that I come up with, or one of the proudest ones I come up with prior to ever getting involved in the lever arm stuff for me. And you don't have to use chains. You can use like motorcycle tie down straps or, or whatever. All right. So yeah, you mentioned lever arms. Can you tell us your favorite lever arm hack? My favorite lever arm yeah. hack. Okay. So it's a toss up between the lever arm lap pull down. Uh, that one and most recently, and my wife would agree, would be that lever arm uh, leg press that yeah. I did. Did you see that? Yeah. And it's oh, yeah. and it's not even like the leg press is really cool. I think, and this isn't even mine. I'm not taking credit for this. Putting the spotter arms on the lever arms to like offset the weights. It's crazy how much of a difference that makes in the resistance curve when you do that, as opposed to just putting the weights on the side of the lever arms. So just that hack in general, putting the spotter arms on it and then doing anything is huge. You Got know it. what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's crazy. Have you ever done that? Do you have lever arms on yours? I feel like you. Yeah, but you I don't, might. I don't play with them as much as you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to start playing with yours. <laughs> just no doubt about that. <laughs> um, what, how, like when you, when you think of something, how long does it usually take you to like get it into action? Like, do you have to play with it for a few days or is it usually like you already know what to do. Usually my best ideas come to me when I'm in bed or on the toilet, I feel like, or in the shower. And so like, once it hits me, I usually can't implement it right then and there. So I have a good amount of the time the rest of the day to think about it. You know, how would I do that? Whatever. So by the time I get out of here, I kind of pretty much already have a game plan in mind. From there, it's pretty much just setting it up for the angles that fit my body. Not everyone's going to be the same. And then of course, with these racks, you've got so many different holes. So setting the height setting the angle, uh, cause everything is adjustable completely. I don't know. It's, it's kind of one of those things you start, you know, at eight o'clock and before you know it, it's midnight and you got your wife out of bed. Hey, can you film something real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to post this. Do you care? <laughs> so I don't know, you know, <laughs> who keeps track of time anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, let's move on to, uh, favorite DIY projects for your home gym. So same thing we asked, uh, people in the another Sunday survey discussion, what's your favorite DIY project? Um, there are a lot of people that actually mentioned something along the lines of just some sort of DIY project to get your gym in shape or your space in shape for a gym. So yeah. home gym hangout said wired in garage heater. Other people said, um, just getting it insulated. Adam, I think you said something too. Yeah. Um, I said, drop it in walls and electric. Right. Yeah. So, oh, okay. so I think that is something yeah. that came to mind for people. The most popular item mentioned was DIY deadlift platform. And mm -hmm. Kyle, that's, that's something we discovered on the DIY survey as well. Right. Yeah. Right? I remember was, that. That was definitely the number one item. Most people were thought they would, would potentially do. Yeah. Um, so we have a DIY expert as well. Kyle, just tell us what are some of your favorite DIY projects that, that you've done in your space? So, yeah, I answered that question on the, on the survey or on the post or whatever. And, uh, I said the same thing that I said, I think when I did the podcast is it's always my most recent, that's my favorite. So right now the seal row bench is like, I'm super pumped about it. I'm using it for seal rows. I'm using it for actually sitting on it for this uh, podcast but I've just found that I'm using it for so much stuff. So it turned out to be even more versatile than I thought it was going to be. And it's really, really nice to have around. Plus it's small enough that it fits behind my functional trainer. So when I'm not using it, it's just out of the way. And, you know, uh, yeah, so that would be my, my number one, but I'm still using my lateral raise machine, uh, every shoulder day. And I love, 
I love that thing. You tried it when you were over, like it just feels really good. The movement feels really natural. And with the different weight pins, you can change the resistance curve. And it's just, it feels, it just burns the hell out of the shoulders, man. I love it. Nice. Yeah. That thing is smooth. All right. I like the evolution of it. It seems like it was just little arms initially. Right. And now it's like a full on butterfly wing. Like it's both sides. It's a, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That's another one of those things. Yeah, exactly. Where like I had an idea I, and it wasn't even my original idea. Like I saw a video of Alex Good using something similar at the Sorenex facility. And I was like, oh yeah, I can do that out of wood. That's easy. And I put it together and posted a reel and people really liked it. But then I started getting suggestions like, try this, do, you know, I want to see it with handles. Somebody wanted <laughs> other weight pin options. And so I just like stacked more and more stuff on it. And then, yeah, the evolution of it was really crazy. And then once I put the video out, people were taking that idea and putting their own spin on it. And I've seen like so many different iterations of it. And it's just, it's amazing every single time to see how quickly it's progressing. Do you pretty much just get your content ideas now from people's people requesting you? Pretty much. Yeah. So early on, I did a couple surveys or just put the question out there. What do you want me to make? And ever since I did that, I've had an ongoing list and the stuff that gets the most votes tends to head toward the top of the list. There's some ridiculous requests in there that are at the top of the list that are just like not doable. You know, I look at the top 10 and sort of look at how my life is looking over the next two weeks and like, what can I possibly prototype and build and shoot and edit and release in that time frame? So yeah, but I get so many suggestions, like requests every day for interesting things. So either I add a new item on the list or I tally it up on the list that's already there. All right. And then just one more question for you. What do you think is the most practical DIY project someone could do for their home gym? So I'm going to go back to our earlier conversation and just say weight storage, storage in general. Like I'm with Adam. That's the whole reason why I started doing this is because I couldn't find adequate dumbbell storage and just decided to build it. I think all of the storage in my gym is all DIY And yeah, I'd rather spend money on equipment. Like storage is really easy. The most practical storage to, in my opinion, would be the wall weight storage, just doing the the plumbing pipes. You just screw them together, uh, screw them onto a two by four, and then attach that two by four to a stud and you have storage. It's super easy. And you know, anybody can do it. All you need is a screwdriver. Boom. Yeah. And you save money. Yeah. And it looks good. They look cool. I like this stuff. Yeah, they do look good. Okay, let's move on to the hot or not results. So like Adam said at the beginning of the call, we're going to try something new. We have been doing hot or not survey results for a couple of years. We're going to start talking about it on the podcast. We started a list for the entire year. So we'll, we'll keep track of it as the year goes along. And uh, right now we have about three weeks to talk about. So the first three weeks of January... Again, this is something that we use the Instagram story for and post a picture of an item and you simply say, is it hot or is it not? So pretty simple. You get immediate feedback. We've tried several other things, but this is definitely the most popular way to do hot or not. So some highlights for the year. So we've done 29 products so far. We're not going to go through every single one, but I have a few notes that are pretty interesting, actually. So the first one is um, a battle of the Concept 2 rower and the Rogue Echo Bike. So last year, the Rogue Echo Bike beat out the rower by a few percentage points. However, the rower wins this year with 87% voting hot, and then the Echo Bike getting 86%. Well, something to compare it to the assault bike received 73% hmm. hot votes. Pretty interesting. It does seem like the concept two rower is the uh, most popular item for cardio right now in this space. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if uh, the echo bike can take its lead. Actually, we won't do this question again until 2023. So concept two wins this year. Nice. Um, Another uh, kind of grouping 
comparison that we have. We did a traditional GHD, a traditional reverse hyper, a two in one combo reverse hyper and GHD, and then also just the scout hyper. The GHD is the winner here followed by the scout hyper reverse or the combo. And then last was the reverse hyper. So, Hmm. and then the, so far in last place is the power block pro series straight bar. So think of the adjustable dumbbells that power block is very popular for awesome Mm -hmm. product, but on a barbell. Those, Um, those look pretend They they don't look real to me. I know. I was like, someone clip our, (laughs) Clip arted <laughs> two power blocks on a on a barbell. That, that's that's not real. Yeah, I'm with you. Bar, Most power blocks are cool though, but the barbell <laughs> is not. It's not hot. Yeah. <laughs> what percentage do you think voted hot? Well, uh, on that bar, yeah, I'm gonna say probably like ten percent. Uh, it's ten percent exactly. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, listeners, Kyle gets to see all the results before he guesses. <laughs> <laughs> What I'd well, have, it, I, I would have a lot more right answers if that if was you, true. <laughs> if you've paid attention to the blog posts, you would know they've all these have all been posted. Yeah, I'm gonna look up the website right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna spread these out, maybe not make a blog post about them each week, but it's gonna spread them out and, and chat about them throughout the year. The hottest score so far for this year. At about 94%, which is going to be a tough score to beat, was the raw clear coat AB5200 bench. And we did all four colors of the rep AB5200 to see how that varies. So this was kind of interesting too. So about 94% voted for the raw clear coat. Just behind it was metallic black, right around 93%. The red was a decent amount behind at 84%. And then the blue was way back at 75%. I don't understand it. It's such a beautiful blue. Yeah. I would say the, the blue is my least favorite as well. Is it? Yeah. Burn. What about you guys? I haven't had a red. I like rogue red. I don't know that I'm crazy about rep red something about it is it's a watered down version of a red i don't know man i wouldn't say watered down but it's brighter than the than the rogue i'm I'm staring at your racks in the background yeah yeah yeah, all i see all i see is red (laughs) get a good look (laughs) that clear coat is fire yeah yeah those are insane is there is there a big price difference between like a clear coat 5200 and then like just like a black one? Yeah, I want to say if if not discounted, it's like an 80% or sorry, $80 difference. 80 to 100 80 to 100. All right. All right. So to pay for the same thing but a cooler color, you know, might be tough for for yeah, most. that's hard. I'm too practical to do something like that. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me I'll just you... stick with the boring color. Yeah, you'd rather <laughs> just spend hours working on something. Right, yeah, I'd take that 80 bucks and buy some materials and make something cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? 469 for that uh, metallic black, and then your raw clear coat, 569. It's an extra 100 Ooh. bucks. Dang. But no man, way, that dude. picture looks sick. That's, yeah. that's, I mean, that clear coat. If you're getting it as a lifetime bench, like, hey, I'm going to own this thing forever and I it's, just want to be satisfied, a hundred bucks is nothing, especially if you're already going to spend Sure. But that thing's hey, I'm with Cal, though, the practicality. That's a hundred dollars you can put towards anything you, else. You don't need a raw clear coat. But you look at the picture and then you have to tell yourself, no, you oh, don't. Yeah, but then, yeah. clear coat. but then, then you know you're gonna you, you're you're gonna want to match your rack, and then you want to get a raw guys, clear coat. Guys. You gotta <laughs> swap out your rack because they don't match. It's a slippery slope, man. <laughs> so do it. <laughs> <laughs> the solution is simple. <laughs> Go sledding. Yeah. So we'll yeah we'll see if that raw clear coat gets beat out this year, but very hot start for that item. And then just a few more, uh, we did the first week of the year, we did, uh, all pulley strength machines. So a few highlights there was 
the Rogue LP lap pull down two was the overall winner, but the uh, Titan single stack was like two percentage points behind. Also about like, I want to say a third of the price or yeah. like, you know, like yeah. huge price difference. I think um, it's like a thousand dollar price difference. I, I think, think it's, it's like a 1700 to like a, maybe like a 24. Okay. So like a $700 difference, but like it's significant Dang. with free shipping. Okay, can I look it up real quick? Y'all keep talking. Yeah. I'm actually, I actually have you it here. It? So the, okay. the rogue LP two is $3,500. Whereas the the lat tower from Titan is sixteen ninety nine with free shipping, so wow. yeah, it's under half the price. Yeah, before <laughs> shipping. So I mean, that was pretty interesting. The Frey Fitness also offers a, a somewhat similar option. That was just a few percentage points behind Titan. And then the last one we have the rep FT 5,000 beating out the red functional trainer from Frey. So rep was at 77% and then Frey was at 75%. So not too far of a difference. And then just to compare that to the nemesis functional trainer from Titan, uh, it doesn't seem like that is uh, a huge hit yet. 50% said hot if so just 50 yeah does that one have two arms or is it just like a single pole has two arms yeah one stack wow 50 percent. yeah it's a cool little like, piece i think but it is a cool little piece i think what scares people away is you know the single stack right and then it's either a two or four to one ratio what's the stack on that do you remember is it 300 pound stack or is it less than that? Mm, we can look it up. It better not be a four to one. That's so odd though. Like you got two arms, but yet it's one stack. So it's one pulley essentially working two. I don't know. It's if you it's, have like a, like a small corner, it would, it would be a nice fit. Um, yeah. Otherwise, like I think the price is like similar enough to where you could just get a full. Yeah, it's a, it's a two ten weight stack with four to one Ooh. ratio yikes that's not a lot <laughs> oh, <it's> not. <laughs> yeah yeah i wonder if they'll they'll come out with a v2 for that like like you said adam it's it seems like a really good home gym option yeah with uh space in mind i saw so, I, I thought it looked pretty cool four to yeah. one yeah I'm so strong <laughs> look at me whole stack <laughs> <laughs> one arm <laughs> hey honey come here stand on it <laughs> uh yeah so that does it for our, our little summary of the hot or not results this like i said i think what what's cool about this is it's probably kind of hard to understand like via a podcast and only a few weeks in but i think when you're when you're able to see the full list and kind of see once we have 100 200 products on there it'll It'll, it'll be pretty cool to see how everything compares to each other. Yeah. And like, you just have to keep in mind, I, I'll throw this disclaimer out just because the people vote an item as hotter doesn't mean it's a better product than something that sure. may be lower. Yeah. So like I, I jump into this, like playing fantasy gym, like, would you like that new gym today? Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and there are very, very few products where I'm like, nah, I'm good. Um, and a color on a 5,200 would never make me say not. So if I yeah. see a rep 5,200, I'm saying hot for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right. I think uh, we can wrap this up then. Oh, sad. All right. That wraps it up, guys. In part one of tonight's episode, we went over the Sunday survey results. In part two, we went over the hot or not results and dug into the Sunday discussion with our guests. Just a reminder to you all to be sure to follow us on the Garage Gym Experiment Instagram page and participate in these surveys and discussions. Make sure your voice is heard so we can better represent the community in these results. So we want to say thanks again to Kyle and Matt for joining us tonight. Uh, Kyle, give us your plug. Where can we find you? I'm on Instagram, YouTube, pretty much all the socials at Kaizen DIY Gym. And uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, go follow him, guys. Uh, Matt, where can we find you? I'm on Instagram and YouTube. Matt Pendergraf, super easy to find me. Perfect. Yeah, give them both a follow. And uh, make sure you follow the Build Off 
two, where uh, it looks like we're playing homage to the preacher pad. It's so, gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. Can't you see a grown man cry. You're not going to miss it. <laughs> Sweet Kyle crying. <laughs> not me again. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us tonight. Uh, did you enjoy, enjoy tonight's episode? Well, then give us a follow and rate this podcast. Uh, you can also now listen on YouTube. Hey, YouTube. Uh, that's it for this episode. Jake, do you have anything else for the people? I do not. All right. You heard it from Jake. We're done with you. See you next time. Thanks. <laughs>